In this video, I'll show you how to create a clustered engine mount for your rockets, um, and specifically how to create engine mounts that are canted, like this one here. Now, a canted engine mount does two things. First, it makes a really cool effect when the rocket launches. And second, if one engine accidentally goes out, the rocket will actually fly straighter. So if, you're, if you misfire on one engine, the other engine can still push the rocket into the air straighter if it is canted. If it's not canted, the rocket's going to arc over uh, in the direction of the, the one engine that's pushing, uh, kind of like a motorboat. So you don't want your rocket to turn sideways like that, so canting it will keep it going straight. Now, first thing you're going to need is a full-size uh, pattern sheet of the rocket. Um, and I've done this um, in a previous video. I showed you how to print out one of these so it's a full 100% scale to the size of your rocket. And the reason that we need to do that is um, Roxim does not allow us to cant the engines. Um, so we need to create the centering rings for these canted engine mounts, um, which are going to look like this. Uh, where, where two of the holes are closer together than, than the, the other centering ring. Um, and that's our goal here is to make this. Um, but to do that we need a full size layout because we're going to have to actually measure the rocket. So what I've done is created the layout here and then I've also created two engine mounts uh, that I can lay on top. Now when you cant the engines um, According to Mark Page, who has done a lot of research in this, and I want to give him credit for this, um, you want to point the engines so that the center line of the engine points to a point on the rocket that's halfway between the center of gravity and the center of pressure. So if you measure halfway, that is where we want to create um, our, our vertex point. Um, and so then, at that point, um, if the engine was right here, I want to take where the nozzle is, um, mark that point on the paper, and then from there draw a line so I know exactly where that cant line is going to be. And I'll do the same thing for the other motors in the cluster as well. And then I'm going to lay my engine template on it like this, and then rotate it around holding it at the uh, a nozzle point, just kind of kind of rotate it around so that the center line of the engine matches the center line that we just drew. And we'll do the same with the other one that right here, like this. Okay. Now, um, one of the things that you'll notice, let me get a, another sheet here. Now this one I actually uh, is all pasted down so that it won't move around when I make my measurements. So just let me get this out of the way here. Um, so now we have the distance between the centers of the engines. And just take a ruler, or I'm going to take a caliper here, and I can actually measure that distance. And this line right here and this line right here are my centering rings on the rocket. So that is the distance right there that I need to create for my centering ring pattern. And, and af after I print it out, that's the distance that should match. And we're going to do the same thing for the other centering ring on the rocket too. Again, the center line in the middle of the centering rings. Like that. Okay. So that's, that's pretty straightforward at this point. Um, so that's how you're going to create your centering rings. Then once you have those measurements, you can actually go back into Roxim and uh, create a false rocket with the, with the rings that dimension apart. Or you can use a drawing program to create your centering rings. Uh, one thing that I want to, want to notice here is that when we bring these two engines together, the tubes actually interfere with each other. Um, so there's a couple things that we can do. Let me bring this one back up here. Excuse me for uh, making that little pause there. Um, 
Now if the tubes are going to interfere with each other, um, see once they're at that angle, which is not, which is not enough, um, so basically if we drew a center line out from there, now we're way out here on our vertex point, which is not between the center of gravity and the center of pressure. So one of the things you can do if, if you don't want your tubes to interfere is to move your center of gravity forward. Uh, and that will move that midpoint forward. But obviously, uh, you're going to be adding a lot of nose weight here to make it go that far forward. The other thing that you can do is to take your engine tubes and slide them backwards out, out the back end of the rocket like that. And now that can work, um, but as you see, now you're going to have these two engine mounts sticking way out the back. And that may or may not go well with your design. Uh, the third alternative is to actually cut the, the tubes themselves uh, so where they interfere, those tubes are cut away um, as I have done on this, this design right here. The tubes where they interfere, I just cut them away. But it's important to where the cutaway occurs that it doesn't happen where the engine is. Because if the engine, you, obviously you can't cut the engine on a diagonal like that. Um, so if that's the case, then your only alternative is to either move it back or actually what another alternative you can do is what Sunward did with a couple of their kits where, where they had them canted, they actually um, cut a slot in the, the outer tube so that the engine could hang out, just like this one here. And this is, this is another one. This is a four-engine cluster where all the tubes hang out the back. Now, Sunward does sell these engine mounts as pre-made pre kits, and you can buy these from the Apogee store if you want. But um, I'll show you how to make your own engine mount like this that's canted.